All right, let's do our first example using um, the equations we derived in the last video. Uh, we used those equations, the Darcy Weisbach equation, uh, to find out frictional head losses. In this problem, we have a tank and the water level, or actually the fluid is kerosene. It's kerosene. The kerosene is, is filled up to a, a, the height H and the specific gravity of kerosene is 0 0.8 and they give us the kinematic viscosity nu of the kerosene which is 3.0 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared per second and down here at the bottom of the tank we have a pipe um, it's, it's 30 degrees below the horizontal here it's a length of 3 meters and a diameter of 4 millimeters Okay, and up here they give us a conversion factor, 1,000 liters is equal to 1 meter cubed. And, and the question says, consider the flow of kerosene out the inclined reservoir tube, neglecting any entrance losses and assuming steady flow, determine um, A, the flow rate, Q, in liters per minute, for a height of 50 centimeters and determine whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. Okay, so for a height of 50 centimeters, they want the flow rate for a height of 50 centimeters and they want us to figure out if the flow in this tube here is uh, laminar or turbulent. Okay, and down here, actually let's let's label these points. I'm gonna label this up here point one, down here point two. And notice here we have a free jet. Right? It's just the water is just coming out. So that means the pressure here is gonna be equal to zero. Now if we set our datum down here at point two we'll say that's that's our datum down here at point two um, what we do know so far is that the length of the pipe is three meters okay we know that the diameter of the pipe is four millimeters we know new or new of the kerosene is 3.0 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared per second. We also know that the specific gravity of the fluid is 0 0.8. Okay? Now, our equations, um, we will be able to use equation, I'll call this equation 1, the Reynolds number is equal to the average velocity in the pipe times the diameter over nu, the kinematic viscosity. And remember they said determine if it's laminar or turbulent and we don't know, right? They want us to figure that out. So when we don't know if a flow is laminar or turbulent, we can always assume that the flow is laminar and then check it with the Reynolds number. So let's assume it's laminar and remember the head, the frictional head losses for laminar flow is 32 times nu times L, the length of the pipe, over gravity times d squared um, times the average velocity. I'll, I'll just call it velocity A for average. And this is for Reynolds numbers that are less than 2,000, meaning this is laminar. So we assume it's laminar, and if it's if if we find out that the Reynolds number is less than 2,000, our assumption was right. It was laminar. If we find out that it's over 2,000, it's turbulent, and our assumption was wrong. Okay. So let's let's just begin with the equations we do know. For I'll do part A in this video. They want us to figure out the flow rate, and in order to figure out the flow rate, we need uh, the velocity in this pipe. So we can use, let's let's take a streamline from one, we can take one, 
all the way to 2, and we'll say the total energy head coming out minus the total energy head coming in um, is equal to the summation of all the pump heads minus the summation of all the turbine heads um, minus the tur uh, summation of all the frictional head losses. Now, in this system, there's no pumps and there's no uh, turbines, so we can say this is zero and that's zero, okay? And out in, which is points two and one respectively, we can say uh, the V2 squared over 2G um, plus the pressure at 2 over gamma plus the height at 2 um, minus the velocity at 1 squared over 2G uh, plus the pressure at 1 over gamma plus uh, the height at 1 is equal to the negative the sum of all the frictional head losses. And here we only have one pipe, so there's only going to be one uh, frictional uh, head loss. And remember, we assumed it to be uh, laminar, so we just plug in HF into this equation. So it would be negative, right, there's a negative, 32 nu L over GD squared times the average velocity. Okay, now the velocity at 2 we don't know. The pressure at 2, well, it's 0 because it's a free jet, so that's equal to 0. Now, the height at 2, well, we set the datum at 2, so we can say the height at 2 is 0. Velocity 1, well, the velocity up here is 0 because it's open to the atmosphere. Um, well, not because it's open to the atmosphere, it's 0 because point 1 isn't really moving, so we can say velocity at 1 is 0. Now the pressure at 1, it's open to the atmosphere, right? So there's no pressure. There's just zero pressure. The height of 1. Okay, so, oh and w one more thing, uh, we, can all, we can say that the velocity average in this pipe is roughly the same velocity as the exit velocity. So we can say V2 is equal to VA, okay? Now let's rewrite this. We can say V2 squared over 2G, okay, 0, 0, minus um, H1 is equal to negative 32 mu L over GD squared times VA or V2. <coughs> And our height, would you agree our height from the datum to point one? It would be three, it would be three meters sine of thirty, right, which is this height up here. So three sine thirty plus h, okay? So we can say v two squared over two g minus height one, which is the height from the datum to point one, uh, which is three sine thirty plus point five meters, right? Because fifty centimeters is point five meters, and that's equal to negative thirty two mu mu. We said um, up here to be three point zero. 3.0 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared per second. Uh, mu L, the length of the pipe is 3 meters, and then velocity 2 is what we're trying to figure out. And the gravity would be 9.81 times the diameter squared. Now the diameter we said to be 4 millimeters, and if we plug that in, uh, that's 0 .004 meters, right, for the diameter squared. And here we only have one unknown, V2. We know gravity, we know all of this. If we solve for V2, we get about 1.059 meters per second, okay? And 
let's check if this is laminar or turbulent, right? Because we assumed it to be laminar. Now we have the velocity, and we we can figure out whether it's laminar or turbulent by the Reynolds number equation, right? Reynolds number is V D over nu. Now we have V, which is 1.059 meters per second. Diameter is 0 0.004 and u is 3.0 times 10 to the negative 6. And if we plug all those in, we're going to get Reynolds numbers about 1412. And that is certainly less than 2000, meaning our assumption was right, and the flow through that pipe is laminar. Okay? So one more thing we need to figure out is the flow rate. The flow rate of the pipe. The flow rate is just Q equals VA, right? And the velocity we figured out to be 1.059 times the area. It's a tube, so it's pi over 4 times the diameter squared, which is 0 0.004 squared. And that's equal to 1.33 times 10 to the negative fifth meters cubed per second, okay? That's in meters cubed per second. They want it in liters per minute. So we can just uh, rewrite it here, times 10 to the negative fifth uh, meters cubed per second. And remember, uh, in, in uh, 60 seconds, there's one minute. And in 1,000 liters, there's one meter cubed. And if we solve... Uh, all that out, we get that the flow rate is about 0.798 liters per minute. Okay? And we'll do part B in the next video.